Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com. Normally I talk about nuclear physics, and a lot of other things too. But today I'm going to talk about lasers, like this guy right here. I can't see the laser because I'm wearing laser protection. I wouldn't point it at myself, of course, because one of the number one rules of laser safety is you don't point lasers at yourself. But if I were stupid enough to do that, I think the glasses would probably protect me because I can't even see this laser light. Yep, it's coming out. Anyway, this is not a very powerful laser, so I don't, I don't need these glasses for it. <clears throat> but what I have for you today is a more powerful laser, way more powerful than this. And I've already shown you this laser before. It's uh, pretty potent. I'm going to shine this at the camera because the camera's not a person. Anyway, basically put, the laser that I have for you today is a DPSS, a Diode Pump Solid State Laser. Anyway, it's an amazing, amazing little device that I just recently bought for myself uh, for messing with lasers, pretty much. You can do holograms and all kinds of fun stuff with lasers. Um, I used to uh, enjoy lasers when I was uh, younger. I actually made a laser once, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. But let's, uh, let's get to the laser first, because really that's the fun part. And I got you a pair of glasses, too, because I figured you guys would want to, like, you know, have some protection as well. Although, I think you'll be safe from the camera. Anyway, the laser I have is really, really powerful. One announcement before I uh, go forward. Um, I'm going to Japan soon. You know, I have, you know how I've been saying that for a couple of years? Like, now I have the actual tickets. So, like, I'm actually going. Not like, oh, soon I will, maybe, kind of. No, 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 no. I, I've got, like, the tickets, so I'm literally about to go to Japan. When I do go to Japan, I will send back readings. I will take lots and lots of samples and readings all over the place and uh, um, see what kind of things I find. Now, I'll be in southern Japan, of course, so that's not as cool as being northern Japan where I would actually see more, but eh, what the heck? We'll see what we find, right? So, here, put your goggles on and let's go see what we can see in the laser. All right, behold, a more powerful laser than my laser pen. This, let me take my safety glasses off, which you'll probably want to wear later on. This is a CNI, uh, that's the brand, laser. And this particular laser, uh, I bought it from dragonlasers.com. They are a reseller of CNI lasers. And basically put, uh, CNI is a Chinese company. I try to buy American, not because I have any problem with other countries or anything like that, but you know, like patriotic, you know, buy your own country stuff. But these guys actually do make really good lasers. So it's a Chinese company, and they build these guys. Like this, this is the actual laser head right here. Uh, this is a DPSS type laser, and I'll explain in a minute what a DPSS laser is. Uh, this is a uh, 100 and this is 100 milliwatts. This is actually 150 milliwatts. Cough, cough. Uh, it actually is a little more power than it, powerful than it's rated for. Um, but this is a class 3B laser. Not to be confused with the class 3A lasers that you mostly see in like the cat toys and stuff like that, you know what I mean? This thing can actually burn out your eyes. That's why you need to wear the goggles, because you can go blind from this thing. This is not a toy. It can, if you hold your hand in front of it for a couple seconds, it starts burning your skin. Uh, it will burn through things. I mean, don't get me wrong, this isn't like a CO2 uh, laser, you know, at 100 watts or anything like that. It's not going to cut a lead pipe in half in three seconds. But uh, this 150 milliwatt, milliwatt laser will actually burn things. And it, most importantly, it can burn your eyes. So you have to have the eye protection on at all times or else you best not be using this laser. Uh, I have protection signs, of course, um, to prevent people from wandering down here. My lab door is locked upstairs anyway. Not that anybody would come in to, into the lab, but you never know. There's a, a whole bunch of FDA rules that have to be adhered to. Like, for example, the safety key, which fits right in here. And the front of the laser has a open and close latch so that it can't shine light out unless the open latch is well, open. It has a power switch, which we'll cut on right now. Red light should cut on. There it goes. Um, it has a safety interlock on the adjuster for, for the voltage. I mean, you have so many things you have to crank and turn on to make this thing work. If you were to look at it from the back, and I'll see if I can turn it around before I fired it up. Let me make sure you can see that. Um, this thing actually has a, uh, let me pull my glasses off, I can't actually see. 
This thing has a trigger, which inputs a pulse and emits a laser pulse as a result. You can be switched between continuous wave and modulation, and a safety interlock. Now, let me put my glasses back on. Um, my glasses are never taken off if the key is turned. That's the rule. In fact, I typically have them on if I even have the power on to the thing. I mean, it's not super dangerous or anything like that, but proper safety has to be maintained or else you can lose your eyesight. So we're going to shine this at the wall here, and I'm going to explain what a DPSS laser is. Now, let me just explain that quickly before I do that. Inside of this laser, this is, there's a diode, a very powerful diode laser. Now, a diode laser works like this. You have a semiconductor membrane or a semiconductor crystal or material that um, moves by having holes, if you like, that electrons fall into. Or you have another type, that's called a, um, that's called a P type semiconductor. And you have an N type se semiconductor, in which case electrons jump across a gate. I mean, you can kind of think of them as opposites of one another, they sort of are. And I'm very simplistically explaining it because this is not exactly a uh, class for that sort of thing. But I can go into more detail if you want to know. When the two are put together, you have holes that are created on one side, and you have electrons that are created on the other side and go flying into the holes that are not created, but they you know, become energized and they jump. They jump from one level to another. And <clears throat> when that happens, a laser light is able to be produced, but that would only last for milliseconds, even microseconds, before disappearing. So you have to create more electrons, a surplus of electrons that wish to uh, fall from higher energy to lower energy. And the best way to do that, to take that population of electrons and invert them so they're not in the low energy, but they're in the higher energy, it's called a population inversion. That's how lasers work. Um, is by coupling these two types of transistors together. Oh, not transistors, <laughs> transistors, I'm sorry. These two types of um, semiconductors together and powering up, sending a lot of juice, a lot of current into the um, uh, N type. Uh, semiconductor, and that'll produce this population inversion. There are many other types of lasers, like gas lasers and stuff. When I was around 12, or however old you are when you're in, in sixth grade, because it was sixth grade where I did it, I think I was 12, maybe 11, I actually built a dye laser. It took forever to find the dyes that I needed, because the dye needed to be um, a particular type. You can't just put like food coloring in it and it'll work. I mean, you had to go get, I had to get special chemicals, and I'd use a bunch of flash tubes from cameras to do it. Uh, this is much more stable. This has a powerful infrared uh, uh, diode laser, and that beam uh, actually pumps its way into another crystal. That the the, the initial diode laser is probably um, uh, germanium, aluminum, arsenide, or something like that, and that that energy it produces hits a crystal, and that crystal is made of neodymium doped yttrium argon uh, garnet, basically, and that produces a, a even more powerful beam. And that powerful beam uh, then hits a small crystal which actually cuts it in half. Well, it doesn't cut it in half, but it you know takes the, 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 the wavelength and splits it up in half. So instead of being um, 1,064 uh, nanometers, it becomes 532 nanometers. That's the green light that you're going to see coming out of this. That's what that is. That's a, uh, let's see, let's say uh, potassium, let's see, it's KTP, so um, P potassium, titanium, phosphate. And that's the type of crystal that's in that. There are many, many, many types of neat lasers, and I can go into how they work and everything. Let's fire this one up, because you don't want to hear me. You, I mean, my God, you've already been hearing me uh, whine for six minutes. Let's fire the thing up. Come on now, that's what we really want. So let's cut the light off. Light is off, all right? Now, safety interlocks and things are cut off. If we turn the power button on, the switch, one, two, three, four, five, and it cuts on, it's ready to go. We are ready to rock and roll. Let's just put this camera a little closer and lower it down just a little bit more. There we go. And that, well, maybe up just a little bit so you can see it. And now, let's start increasing the power. I am turning the di dial with my hand, and you notice that you don't see anything right now, nothing. We hit somewhere around 20-ish or so, you should start to see something. Nothing? I'm getting there. You're like, where's the laser, Tom? Oh, wow, it's so powerful that I can't see it. Let's see, come on now. Don't worry, it's not an infrared laser. You'll see it. There it goes. See the little dot? There's a dot. Tiny dot. Let's increase the, 
the um, brightness here just a little bit by increasing the volume, of, well, the volume of the power. And oh, there it goes. See the dot? You pull back just a little bit. There's the dot. You can see it better from there. All right, and if we lower the laser and angle it like that, it should be a little bit easier to see it. All right, now, that's pretty powerful. In fact, let's move a little closer so we can actually see right down the beam. Alrighty. There. There it is. Get that adjusted. Right. There it goes. All right, now, let's crank that sucker up just a little bit. I'm going to hit 50. 50% mark on this is going to be when it hits 75. 66, 73%, well, 74 units. I haven't, I've asked the manufacturer to explain to me what do these units mean. This goes up to 150, so that means that right here at 75 is 50% power. At 50% power, we're already looking at something pretty potent, as you can see. Now, let's take this all the way up. Make sure those glasses are on good. And as you can see, the room is quite lit up by this thing. Like there's no problem saying it whatsoever. What a powerful laser we have here. Now we can cut some stuff and um, let me find my cutting things. We're gonna start with this, a piece of black construction paper. See, black construction paper. Now watch what happens. And that's blocked, you can't see anything. There it goes. Oh, I move, the problem is I'm moving the paper a little bit with my hand. So it's got to burn its hole again. There it goes, it burned a hole. I move the paper again. There it goes, it burned a hole. And so on. So I'm sort of burning holes in this paper. You see it go through? And now we have burned holes through the paper. Oops, I don't know if you can even see the holes or not through the paper. We certainly burned them through this paper using that. Now, I've got a couple other things here. One interesting one is this feather. This is a feather, a black feather. Let's see what the black feather does when put in front of this. We're going to move this black feather in front and see what it does. The actual fan in the back of the heat of the power unit here, pointed away, is blowing all over the feather, making it somewhat troublesome for heating. It certainly certainly smokes up the feather, doesn't it? If we keep this here long enough, it'll probably cut the feather in half. It's already basically doing that now. Now, lasers can be used for holography and all kinds of interesting physics things. You have to be careful with them because they're very powerful, and you can injure yourself with a laser if you're not careful. Now, as you can, as you can probably see, the beam is quite visible, even though it's, you know, dark. In fact, let me cut on the light for a second. Oops, I bumped my arm. And you'll notice that the beam is, well, should still be visible against the 
wall there. And the reason is for something called Rayleigh scattering. Basically, the laser light's actually bouncing off of the um, molecules as well as the speckles of stuff, which are dust particles. And that's why you're actually seeing that. It's quite impressive. This little guy can actually do that. My laser pen, the other one could do it too, but this one could do it a little better. So, basically put, we can use a laser for like this for um, holography, for burning things, for doing all kinds of physics experiments. And that's what I plan to do as soon as I get back from uh, going to Japan. But for right now, we're just going to stick with this like it is. When I get back, we'll do some holograms and see how that works. Maybe go over the physics of holograms a little bit and how they work. The physics of lasers, population inversions, uh, um, helium neon lasers, we'll go over dye lasers, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, oh yeah, and ruby lasers, because really, who, who can forget ruby lasers? I wonder if that's slowly burrowing a hole through my wall. There's uh, soil and dirt on the other side, since this part's underground. So that shouldn't really cause too much trouble, but... Anyway, this has been Tom from anti-proton.com. Oh, let me show you one last thing before I go. One last thing you might find interesting. Let's take a pair of goggles. These are safety goggles and put them in front of the laser and see what happens. Oops. See what I mean? That's why they're there. They block nearly all of the light. And that's a good idea. The nice thing about this guy, I should point out also before I go, is you can cut the power down, which means that you can drop this down to a safe level where you can adjust your mirrors and your lenses and stuff like that without losing your eyesight. And then you can crank it up afterwards and see how it works. And of course, to be FDA legal, you actually have to have all of these things. I have my FDA stamp when this went right through customs without any problem because it's completely legal because I have the proper equipment. Yay. But this has been Tom from anti-proton.com and I'll see you in Japan.